OTR at Kroger, OTR Eatery for the Bengals Nation, sponsored by Rally House. Not only is Von Bell here as always, but Mike Hilton is back from finger surgery to get back into his co-hosting roles and getting defensive. And our special guest tonight in that segment is Money Mac, Evan McPherson. So let us get on with the show. Chris Renko bringing in our co-host. All right, I think we all needed a bye week. I know I did. I enjoyed mine. What did you guys do on your bye week? I went back home in Miami, uh, chilled, enjoyed the weather. Well, you know, they had the little hurricane. It was on a couple of days, a little rain. Uh, really just got back and reset it, so it was good. Yeah, I did the same thing. Went back home, enjoyed some time with the family. Uh, just take that mental break and, you know, get ready for this uh, back half of the season. Well, Mike, we missed you last week. Did y'all really? Y'all tried we to replace me? No, we did. We held it down. Y'all tried to replace me. We had to, we had to bring in three guys just to, re- to, you know, not replace you, but fill in. So don't worry. You're it's all safe. good. <laughs> Though I don't make that call, so I won't promise anything. Uh, well, welcome back. How are you feeling? How's the defense feeling, you think, right now? I'm feeling good, number one, physically. Um, you know, I, t- I pretty much had two weeks off, so I feel good. But, mm. you know, we're, we're ready, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like I said, we on the back half of the season, man. It's around playoff time, so it's time for us to uh, make that push and really try to make a run. What's it like? You guys are both from the south. You're getting the colder temps. The snow's coming. You used to it yet. It's just time for work. That's all I know. (laughs) (laughs) And it's great football weather, and uh, we built for it. And um, that's what the NFC North is about, and we're about that. So what they said earlier in the meetings today, we do our best work in the cold. So let's get it going. We got the Steelers again this week. I know there's probably a little bad taste in your mouths from week one. What's the focus been like this week when you got a divisional opponent coming right out of the bye week like this? Um, just taking one, one step at a time. I mean, we got to keep on building throughout the week of preparation and know the knowns and uh, just go out there and execute and make plays and just go out there and have fun and let loose and just know what we got in front of us. And uh, that's what we got to win the rest of these games out. And uh, like Coach Taylor put up there on Monday, the teams that we got to play are right in front of us and they're ahead of us. So we're on the outside looking in and we're in the right spot to be it. We just got to handle our business. Yeah, it's, it's getting this first one, you know, getting our first AFC North win is going to be big. Um, obviously, it's going to be tough. All division games are tough, but you're going to, we're going into a hostile environment, fresh off a of bye, so guys got to make sure we're, we're ready to go, and, you know, we, we know it's at stake. We just got to take care of business. It's going to be a different Steelers team because they got the rookie, Kenny Pickett, starting. What have you seen out of him? And facing a rookie like that, is there anything you guys can do extra, you know, throw a little extra gambles at him that, uh, that he's not going to see coming? I'm not asking for the secrets, by the way. You know, you just Let's switch up the looks a little bit. Um, it's working together on the back end with the front seven. And, um, but he's very athletic. Uh, he can maybe make plays with his feet, uh, especially when they got their deep threats going down the field, vertically stretching the field, and just really just going out there trying to make a play. Um, you know, the defense line sometimes hard to tackle him. You know, he's, he scrambles very well, escapes the pocket very well. So and that's just his natural um, just athletic ability of doing that. So he's a very talented young player. But at the same time, he's a rookie, so he's going to make those rookie mistakes. And as a defense, we want to force him into those situations. Uh, so we're going to do a lot of different things and try to, try to, you know, just show him different looks and just try to make plays when we have the opportunity. All right, let's send it over to Gary, who has the head coach, Zach Taylor. With the week off, you were able to watch the Steelers on TV. How different is that for you to, to watch them and see how differently they present the game? It's always interesting just to hear what the commentators say and, and see – you know, some of the stuff that happens over the course of the, the, the flow of a normal game that you don't see on the All-22 copy. Do you become aware of how often they show the coach? No. <laughs> no, I, I probably don't think too much about that, to be honest with you. I think the- well, you see the other guys, you know, when they're, if the game's closed, there's a big decision, right away the camera's like, Yeah, oh. they usually, the guys in the press box usually tell me when I'm on the camera so, so I can cover my mouth or do whatever I need to do. Yeah, I noticed that, you know, with the play card, is always the coach is always covering with the play card. Did, did, it's just a habit. It, it really they're is. They're not going to steal a play at the, well, with the last second, are they? Part of it is you're talking into a mic, and, and so any wind makes it hard for the quarterback to hear. So you get in a habit in practice of I always cover up the, my mouth to block the wind out so that they can hear more clearly. You're talking onto a walkie-talkie, essentially. So you just get into a habit. We do that every day in practice, and then it carries over to the game where I don't even think about someone reading my lips necessarily. It's just the habit of – covering that mic so that it restricts any of the, the outside noise that, that can pick up in the quarterback's helmet. What's your philosophy about 
you know, IR can be very tricky to whether, okay, is he going to make it before the four games? Should I have this roster spot? What's your philosophy about how to do that? Because you've been presented that a number of times. Yeah, it, it can change depending on the position, depending on where you're at with your roster. Um, there's a lot of factors at play there that you have to factor in, and, and um, it's impossible to know sometimes what the right decision is. You just have to try to make the best decision with the information you got. Zach tells us how they'll attack the Steelers and try to even the season series, and whether he can stand hearing the song Renegade in Pittsburgh or anywhere else. Faux Rock Slocks, sponsored by Hawksworth. It is time for Faux Rock Locks, but where's Faux Rock? He's normally sneaking up behind us. Where in the world is Faux Rock? He's Tell us, scary. He's locked out. But with good reason. He's back celebrating out in Arizona, Arizona State Sun Devils Rose Bowl Championship, and they had Fulcher as one of their special guests. But since I'm on a little bit of a hot streak, I'm going to give David a pick. Okay. As we tape this, the Cowboys are actually favored by a point and a half at Minnesota that just beat Buffalo with an incredible ending to that game. So I'm going to give Faux Rock, the Vikings, getting points. All right, Gary, you know, I'm a kind of a daring guy. You know, I like to roll the dice a little bit here and there. So, interesting game, Buffalo and Cleveland. Buffalo's an eight-point favorite, but they're going to get about two feet of snow. Josh Allen is a great quarterback, but he can't run the football like Nick Chubb can. So, in a blizzard, give me the Browns to cover. I don't know if they'll win, but I think that's going to be a low-scoring but very close game because the Browns like to run the football. All right, and I will just take... The Eagles off of the first loss of the season. Seven point fa uh, favorites at Indianapolis. I think Saturday is not going to play on Sunday this week against the Eagles. Colts go down. Getting defensive, sponsored by Blake Maislin. Today we got a real special guest, man. Real uh, special. A, a fan favorite, a, a team team player favorite. Y'all give a warm welcome to Shooter McPherson. There we go. Oh, take a laugh for you, yeah. Money Mac, Money Mac. Yeah, what's up, man? <laughs> what's up, bro? Hey, welcome to getting defensive. You what? Welcome to getting defensive. That's the oh, name of the I'm show. I'm happy to be here. Thank I'm you. happy to be yeah. here. Yeah. Get loud for him. Oh, I'll reach up right into it. So I was doing my research. It's your younger brother, older brother, all kickers. Yep. So what, what's the competition like in the family? The competition's real. Um, it doesn't matter if it's kicking. It doesn't matter if it's basketball, baseball, soccer. Um, we just love to compete, and that's how we grew up. And mm. you know that's probably what made us, you know, how we are today. But they know you, Money Mac, right? That's one of the names, yeah. <laughs> Man, Evan, you, 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 everybody knows how well you kicked the ball, man, and everything. Um, you can go back to high school. What was the longest field goal you've ever made? It can be in practice or longest anything. Longest field goal is 75 yards. 75, 75. yards. Yep. Ooh. And I feel like I've seen that film on Twitter and all that. I feel like Maybe. I mean, my <laughs> Maybe. crazy. 75 yards. So I'll say, i ask, what is your, like, routine when you go back there and get ready to kick? Um, it, it's pretty simple. Uh, you know, a lot of kicking is, is mental, you know. Mm -hmm. and I, I mean, a lot of football is mental. You, you overthink stuff and you question yourself. And so you really just try to lock in and not think about much. Mm -hmm. So obviously you, you, for kickers, you check out the wind, the wind pattern, uh, the conditions of the field, footing. And after you do all that, you're just kind of doing your steps that you've done over and over. So it's just repetition from there. And then once you get back in your stance, um, you take one more look at the uprights, make sure everything that you uh, figured out beforehand is, is still the same. And then from there, it literally just kind of black out and Man. go through. I like that. <laughs> Man, it's been a lot, a lot of real good kickers over the last couple of years. Is there somebody you just, you know, really idolize or just love growing up? He don't have to yeah. be playing now. It can be somebody back yeah. in the day. You know, it, it's really crazy because growing up, I really idolized uh, Justin Tucker, and it's crazy to be playing him two two times a year, and just getting to know him on a personal level, not even like a like on a football level. It's it's been really cool. Like him, um, Adam Vinatieri is another guy that I looked up to. 
Um, so those two, I really say. Um, legends. Legends. Yeah, definitely legends. They, they really changed everything for our position. So mm. I respect them for everything that they've done. Just, just, just explain Darren, man. How, how is Darren <laughs> just explain how he is, who he is. We love you, Darren. <laughs> Yeah, no, we love Darren. Um, <laughs> Darren's a special, a special guy, and there's a reason that he's been doing this for as long as he has. And you know, people respect him. Um, his standards for us are, are, are very high, and we're just out there, you know, striving for perfection. Um, but yeah, Dar Darren's a special coach. I got one more question. What's your favorite thing about Cincinnati? Favorite thing about Cincinnati? Um, honestly, living in Florida for three years. I really love the diversity of like weather. Mm -hmm. I love how you can get really hot in the in the summer, yeah. and then you can get the snow. Because it, it, in Florida, you never saw yeah, it snow. Stay the same. And sometimes it's brutal, but uh, I really enjoy just like the weather in Cincinnati. I love the food in Cincinnati. Okay. The, the fans in Cincinnati. Okay, there we go. There we go. Hey, wait for it. Honestly. Don't die, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, probably one of the best fan bases in the NFL just because, you, you know, all the, all the struggles that they've had. Um, but, you know, they kept believing. And, you know, now that we're kind of on a roll here, uh, I just feel like the whole city of Cincinnati kind of has our back and, mm -hmm. you know, will always be there for us. Earning Your Stripes, sponsored by Rally House. What stood out to you between week one and where they are now? Well, T.J. Watt's back. And that's, that's, you know, one of the best players in the NFL. So the defense, the energy level certainly raises. Um, they've got other great players, and so they just added a, another really great player to the mix there. Um, I think the, the crowd was tremendous for them, you know, with the home game against the Saints. They fed off that energy when they got the lead. They were able to run the football. And so you, you could feel that Pittsburgh Steelers style play there on Sunday, and, and they did a good job winning the game. It is a different kind of place. It almost has a collegiate atmosphere. How much is the atmosphere help the Steelers in home games? Sure. I mean, they, they, when they start to feed off those turnovers and they get a lead, that crowd gets into it. Um, they start to play their, their song that they like to play there in the second half typically. And, and so, again, you could, you could see the energy there and the players responded appropriately. If you hear outside of, the, of that game, if you hear the song Renegade by Styx, <laughs> do you turn the channel immediately? Or <laughs> no, we embrace that. You know, that's, that's, uh, that's one of the great things about being in the NFL. You know, there's unique environments you play in every single week. And I think that's why we love being in this profession, is, is being a part of those situations and, and overcoming some adversity that's thrown your way. How do uh, Najee and, and Jalen complement each other and how has that helped their run game? Well, stop me if you've heard this before, but when you have a lead, running the football becomes a lot easier. You know, you start to wear down the defense and they, they had a lead. And so they were able to keep feeding those guys. And Jalen Warren's big run came, I think with two minutes left in the game, a well, third and eight, when they were trying to put that game away with the run. And, hurdle the guy and made a couple people miss. And so um, that's, that's the brain of football that everybody wants to play, is build a lead and start hammering people with your backs. And that's what they did on Sunday. Zach is back after Troy Walters and Charles Burks filled in last week. We finally get to break down crushing Carolina, including the key to Joe's record setting fifth touchdown of the day. Coach Taylor's Breakdown, sponsored by Everdry. Okay, here's a couple plays from our game against Carolina a couple weeks ago. This is a great job by Jermaine Pratt. We're in cover two. He's going to recognize the pattern coming over the top of him here and matching this thing and getting underneath. And, and really, that's, you know, you see a lot of linebackers drop this type of ball. He does a great job going up and high pointing it and making a big play for our defense. So, and then the next one you see here, they're late in the down. We're showing a cover zero look. And so you can't see the play clock here, but the play clock's about five, four, three. The quarterback's trying to check. The crowd is loud. He can't hear. Uh, these guys are going to be late to get set, so it's going to be an illegal shift. So he's just trying to get the playoff. Three, two, one. They're moving. He's got to snap the ball. It's a legal shift. Um, you can see the matchups it presents. So when they're trying to block these, these guys in cover zero, it gives you great matchups here with Trey Hendrickson just to win off the edge here. So that, that's part of what our crowd gives us is home field advantage playing at home getting us off the field on the key third down is a great job. You can see here the score is 28 to nothing. We were trying to get to 35 at the end of the half. Um, it looked like it was going to be tough with only a minute 24 left in, in our defense on the field. But you're going to see here Jesse Bates doing a great job. You see Jalen Davis coming off the edge in a replacement, cover two. 
uh, zone replacement pressure here. You see Jesse doing a great job getting to the numbers, playing over the top of that seven cut, and he's in position for the tips and overthrows. We got to have those. And Jesse does a great job of bringing this down and, and giving us great field position to go in there and capitalize and get another seven points before the half ends. Next one here is the end of the half. So again, we got no timeout. So this is no zone situation. The ball's gonna go in the end zone or out of bounds. Nothing else is acceptable. And so we're just running five verticals here, trying to get five guys in the end zone. Mixon's got really this outside um, area here to work with and does a great job uncovering there. Joe finds him for that touchdown right there on the last play of the half. In the scramble drill, you can see Hayden working across the field trying to show up. You see everybody else trying to uncover. And you can see Mixon doing a great job getting the sidelines, getting both feet in. Great throw by Joe. Good job getting his seven points before the half. This is our first possession after halftime. We're gonna get big people right here, big 13 personnel. We're just gonna run a tight zone, a, a gap scheme with no pullers here, duo. They do a great job washing this edge down up top. And so now this corner's got to pin the hip and tackle Joe Mixon. That's a tough task right there. Joe does a great job turning that corner and finishing on there. Front pile on doing a great job. Answering a touchdown with the touchdown, giving us a 42 to seven lead and allowing us to run away with this game. We'll check in with Zach Taylor on what's it gonna take to get the Bengals first divisional win of the season. This is my glory. Chris's Star Matchup, sponsored by Gold Star. For my matchup this week, it's the same as it was in week one, but it rings also true now months later into the season. The Bengals have to stop T.J. Watt and the Pittsburgh Steelers' pass rush. Now in that week one overtime loss to the Steelers, Pittsburgh teed off on Joe Burrow seven times. One sack went to T.J. Watt, who left the game early with a pectoral injury that kept him out of most of this season. Watt is now back healthy. The Steelers' defense will look to get after Joe Burrow if they want to have any chance of beating the Bengals for the second straight time this season. Because he's really good at reading the quarterback's drop through the tackles um, and understanding when you're trying to throw the ball quickly. And you saw in the first game, he got an interception just based off of reading my feet and getting his hands up in, in the passing lanes. Keys to the game, sponsored by Kia. When you're 0-3 in the division, and at Pittsburgh, this has got to be a must. What's it going to take? Well, the first time we played them, we lost the turnover battle five to nothing. Mm -hmm. and, and so you got to win the turnover battle, especially on the road in a divisional game. Um, and we got to outplay them on special teams as well. You know, I think that's something that's always come up every time we've played against these guys as big special teams plays um, going one way or the other. And so our guys got to step up and, and really help us out there. Bengals players are excited the game has been moved up to 425 Sunday. The sooner they can get at the Steelers and the happy flight home. Catch it live on your home of the Bengals, Local 12. Ev, I want to ask you one because I, when we talked to you during uh, OTAs, you were getting ready to get married. And then you got married during the break with the, the wonderful Gracie. Now, did you have anything special football-wise at, at the ceremony? Um, so it was actually pretty cool. Um, we had like a, we had a field goal post that we bought and we wrapped it, I guess, in vinyl and just kind of like grass. And it was actually one of the main photo ops at the, uh, at the wedding, or one of. <laughs> But you didn't kick the cake through the uprights or anything? I did not. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I got one for all three of you here. I myself went back to my alma mater for my yearly trip back to Ball State. And I thought about this, because I know I got places I got to go when I go back to Muncie. You guys go back to your alma maters. What's the one place you have to stop by? Ajax Diner. In, in the square of Oxford, Mississippi, Ajax Diner. What's Trust the specialty, me. Mike? Whatever your heart desires. <laughs> That's a great question. Go you want me to go first? <laughs> I didn't still think. I think Buckeye Donuts is always going to be a staple there. So I'll go there for a glazed donut. I have not been back to... Boy, <laughs> when you get back to Gainesville, where are you going? When I get back to Gainesville... So I was a pretty simple man whenever I was in college. I was at, I was at the stadium, and then I was back home. Uh, I ate what they gave me, or... That is simple. <laughs> or ate Zaxby's or Panda. Um, Zaxby's is good. We have some pretty cool lakes around, and you just kind of go walk around and uh, just look at all the gators, and you try to mess with them. So I, would, I think it's called Lake Alice. It is one of the, uh, the lakes that everybody would walk around. It's got a really nice chapel by it. 
and it was just a really pretty place to walk. So I'd probably go back there. All right, I know the defense, you guys work hard during practice. Specialists, you knew this was coming. Yeah. I mean, do you guys even practice? And you guys, when you look over and you see Evan and Huber and all them kind of lounging and, you know, it's on their phone or doing whatever they do, do you get a little mad about that? I'm not going to say we get mad, but it must be nice to stand by the heaters and stuff. <laughs> While we're out there, you just see those three guys by the heaters, drinking water, just enjoying, having a good time. Yeah. But it's definitely never. Yeah. I mean, I do envy them during practice, though, too, because, like, today, it was, just, like, the snow, the, you know, the sky opened up, it was snowing, and they're over there running around, and I'm just standing around the snow <laughs> freezing. And so there's, it has its pros and cons, definitely. Um, I don't do anything at practice until the last period, so I just kind of stand around, and then about 30 minutes before my period, I warm up and get going. I let him do the thing. He gonna be in the game in the most pressurized situation, so hey, you chill out, brother. <laughs> Whatever it takes. I got you. <laughs> Evan, amongst your seemingly countless nicknames, is Shooter McPherson because of your last name. Tell us about Shooter reaching out to you, the Shooter McPherson, yeah. McDonald, the actor, before the Super Bowl. That was super funny, and it's probably definitely something that we didn't um, think was going to happen. Um, but honestly, like everybody grows up watching Happy Gilmore, and for, just for him to reach out, was, it, it was really funny and it was really cool um, for that to happen. I actually didn't know Shooter McPherson was a real person. No, it's Shooter McGavin. Just, no, it's, well, Shooter, it's Chris it's McDonald, Shooter, the actor. But. It's Shooter McGavin. Okay, all right. Shooter McGavin, there you go. Where do you guys rank? You may have to stay out of this. Where do, I will. Where, I will. Where, where do you rank the Steelers in, in terms of dirty players? I don't really know. So I wouldn't say dirty in a sense, but they try to be the most physical. But if you're not they physical, there you go. If you're not physical, you're not trying to win. So it, it might be dirty to the fans, but just know it's all competition. It's all competition. Evan's over here going, up. physical? What's physical? Uh, yeah. Kicker doesn't know, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. All right, they, they got Renegade, and we can't wait to turn the TV off if you're, or if you're there in person to plug your ears. But what do we have? We have... Who the